Hi, today in this video I'll show you how to make a 5000 watts inverter for a solar panel array or for solar power. The inverter will take 72 volts input and convert this to 220 volts AC with a maximum power of about 5000 volt amperes. The circuit is based on the IR2153 half branch driver IC which is a very good and reliable IC for use as a push-pull driver or even a half branch. In this case, I've used it as a push-pull driver. The IC requires just a few components to bias it and it will give two alternating outputs at its high output and its low output pin 7 and 5 respectively. The overall circuit is as shown. The circuit has just a few components. The output AC will be a square wave AC which can still operate many AC appliances. Don't use this for sensitive equipment that specifically need a pure sine wave AC, but majority of the appliances should work well. At the input, there is a capacitor C3 rated for 1000 microfarads and at least 100 volts, preferably 200 volts DC. You can parallel as many as of these as possible. So the 72 volts should be from solar batteries. I believe these are about 6 batteries connected in series. The IC will get its power directly from the high voltage 72 via the breeder resistor or 2 which is 12 kilo ohms and 5 watts and the capacitor C2 which is 330 microfarads and 25 volts at least will filter and smoothen this voltage supply to the IC. The IC has 8 pins and the respective IDs are shown. So pin 1 is VCC which is connected to the input power supply. The AC has an internal zener diode which will regulate the voltage at pin 1 to about 15 volts and also ensure that the voltage supplied to the gates of MOSFETs does not exceed this. To set the oscillator, you need a resistor R1 and C1, they are 56 kilo ohms and 220 nanofarads and with those values you should have an output frequency of about 57 Hz and the formula is given by 1 or over 1.4 into R1 plus 75 ohms or that times CT. If you equate all that, you should have an output frequency of 57 Hz. Ensure that the capacitors and resistors you use will give you a frequency in between 50 and 60 Hz. Just connect VB, which is pin 8, to VCC as shown. Because you are using this as a push pin driver and not a half bridge, pull down pin 6 to ground as shown, pin 4 is ground, and the output will be taken at pin 7 and pin 5 as shown. Resistor 3 and R4 are 100 ohms and at least quarter watts. The transistors Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 act as a current boost and this will be used to drive the gates of the MOSFETs and the outputs will be following the outputs at HO and LO pin 7 and 5 respectively. R6 and R5 are 22 ohms and 1 watt. The MOSFETs Q5 through Q12 are the high voltage high current IRFP to 64, they are written for 200 volts and that is 3 amperes, so if you pair off of those together, they should easily handle more than 80 amperes, which is enough to give you 5000 watts from a 72 volts battery array. You can use other MOSFETs, just ensure that the ones that you select can handle at least 80 amperes or more. The gate protection diodes D2 and D1 are Zena diodes rated for 15 volts, and the gate distance resistors R8 and R7 are 10 kilo ohms and at least half watt. D1 and D2 are written for at least also half watt, although 1 watt is recommended. The circuit works in a fairly simple manner. Assuming in the first stage you have a high output at pin 5, Q3 will conduct and Q4 will be off and so current will flow from the positive supply through Q3 and through L5 to the gates of the MOSFET Q5, Q6, Q7 and Q8. Because pin 7 is low, Q2 will conduct and this will pull down the gates of the MOSFETs Q9 through to Q12 to ground ensuring they remain off. Now you have Q5, Q6, Q7 and Q8 conducting and this will cause current to flow from the positive of the battery array through the right hand side of the primary winding through the MOSFETs and to the negative rail or ground as shown. This is the first half cycle. In the second stage, now pin 5 goes low and pin 7 goes high. Q4 now turns on and this will pull down the gates of the MOSFETs Q5 to Q8 to ground and cause them to turn off. Because pin 7 is high, now you have current flowing to the basis of the transistor Q1 and Q2. Q2 will turn off, but Q1 will turn on. 
This will cause current to flow from the positive supply through Q1, through the resistor R6 and to the gates of the MOSFETs Q9, Q10, Q11 and Q12, ensuring that they are on. When this happens, no current flows from the positive of the battery array through the left hand side of the primary winding, through the MOSFET strains and to ground as shown. This completes the second half cycle, which completes one oscillation, and the process will repeat 50 times per second. The IC offers a small dent time of about 2 microseconds, and so the output's AC will be a square wave with a tiny dent time in between. This dent time is good because it will ensure that the voltage spikes generated across the transformer windings are minimal, but in case they are significant, the capacitor and diode networks made up of C4, D3, as well as C5 and D4 will act as a snubber arrestor, meaning that in case there is a voltage spikes, for example generated here, the capacitor C4 will conduct and the diode D3 will be found biased, and so the current will flow through C4 and D3 and through the winding as shown instead of the voltage spike being generated across the drain of the MOSFETs, which if is large enough it can damage all the MOSFETs. The same case for the other side. If there is a voltage spike here, C5 will conduct as well as D4, and the voltage spike will flow through C5 and D4 and through the winding as shown, ensuring that the MOSFETs Q5, Q6, Q7 and Q8 are protected. For the transformer, this is an iron core transformer. You can salvage one from an old welding machine or buy one if you want. The rating should be 5000 VA. That is 4 amperes because this is the usual voltage rating for transformers and not watts. The winding ratio between the primary and the secondary is 1 is to 1 for the primary winding halves and 3 times on the output. This will ensure that the 72 volts will be stepped up to a voltage that is equal to about 220 volts. If you have a good transformer that you will make your own windings, you can customize the windings and get the exact voltage that you want on the output. Ensure that it's from 220 to 240 volts for countries that operate at such a voltage or 110 volts for the other countries that operate at that voltage. The PCB route for the project is as shown. Here you have your input from the batteries, the filtering capacitor, the AC, its biasing component, the gate drive transistors, one side of the MOSFETs, the other side of the MOSFETs, the snubber network, and these are connections to the transformer, this is the middle terminal, and the others are the end primary windings. And in 3D the board will look as shown. So you have your input here, and your connections to the transformer here. The MOSFETs, the IC, the gate drive transistors, number network, like that. And here is the bottom side. You can see that the high current carrying tracks are well emphasized. And I recommend if you make such a board, you thicken these tracks with a lot of solder to ensure that they can handle the high current of up to 70 amperes.